Oh, welcome to our weekly look ahead at the markets here at markets.com. And uh, well, a quick recap of the last week. Uh, fresh records for the Dow, the S&P 500. And uh, we saw rates on the move. That's quite, quite uh, big moves in uh, US interest rates, in fact, global interest rates. UK two year uh, gilt yield uh, topping its highest level in two and a half years. The two year gilt in the US, or sorry, two year bond in the US. The yield on that highest in a year. Ten year uh, treasury yield up to 170. Uh, that's its highest in uh, several months. Uh, yield curve moving around a bit. It was a bit, bit of steepening, bit of flattening. Um, but uh, so safe to say that inflation expectations are higher. Uh, UK inflation expectations, 10 year break evens are up to their highest in 25 years. We've also got multi year highs for. US uh, inflation expectations. Likewise, in Europe, where the focus uh, heads to this week with the European Central Bank, which, although we're not expecting any kind of announcement of any material sense, we do think that probably Christine Lagarde will want to push back against the increasingly hawkish market interest rate expectations. We've seen yields climbing, inflation expectations moving higher, and really all sparked by the Bank of England, which has been saying that it's almost certainly going to be raising rates, or at least that's the, the, the way the market has read it, with Andrew Bailey, uh, the governor of the Bank of England, and Hugh Pill, the chief economist among those, making pretty hawkish remarks over the last few weeks, and that has raised expectations that the bank will raise rates in November, and then potentially again uh, in the following months, up to about uh, three quarters or even one percent by August. Now that's had a read across for other central banks and European central banks uh, among those. So we think probably with uh, the bank sticking to its view that inflation is going to be transitory, uh, if you believe that, then that's up to you. Uh, but the central banks are sticking to that line and uh, that will mean that they're going to likely push back against the market view of interest rates and where they should be. That's the big one with Bank of Canada as well. There'll be the BOJ, the Bank of Japan outlook. Um, and we've got the US inflation data, the core PCE index. That's the big one. That's one that uh, the Fed looks at and could uh, drive some market volatility. Also, of course, we've got earnings season coming up. Uh, well, not coming up, we're in the midst of it now. Uh, Shell reports, uh, that's the big one for the UK. In the US, it's the turn of some of the big tech giants like Microsoft, Alphabet, and so on. Also keeping a close eye on social media stocks this week, we've got Facebook reporting, uh, among others. And it's uh, been hit, well, shares were uh, down 5% or so on Friday after Snap reported a big miss on revenues and warned that advertising uh, income was lower than expected and likely to remain so because of the global supply chain problem and labor shortages, which affect uh, uh, the advertisers willingness to uh, spend money with the likes of Snap and Facebook and so on. Piper uh, in the US made the point that that has a big a big read across for Facebook, Twitter and uh, Alphabet under Google and therefore though when these report this week there could be some uh, movement. Question marks over whether Facebook could even warn about profitability this week coming. So keep your eyes on those stocks. They're going to be some of the most interesting to look out for. Uh, as ever, we'll be keeping an eye on gold and oil prices for you. Gold managing to break $1,800 again on Friday. Uh, oil, of course, has made uh, a multi-year high, a new multi-year high uh, last week. Uh, WTI topping $84. And then finally, we're keeping an eye on Bitcoin. That's the one that hit a record high uh, last week uh, off the back of that ETF launch. And we've had more ETFs uh, uh, on the way and there'll be more coming, of course. And then finally, keep your eyes open for DWAC, the NY, uh, the NASDAQ listed SPAC, which is the vehicle for Donald Trump's social media platform. Uh, shares were up about 1200% uh, on Friday from the Wednesday list price. So uh, a bit of uh, frenzied uh, Donald Trump related action there for you, which uh, is always welcome and quite a lot of fun. So that is it for now. We'll have more updates for you every day here on X-Ray at markets.com.